plane ride bird. Does this mean anything? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the, I think you're referring to the White Knuckle Charter Company. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> so basically what happened is my parents, they launched the safari business and it slowly started to become successful, but they started to run into a problem as my sister and I were getting older because school started to become an issue. So there was obviously no, no way to take us to school living out here. So they decided that what they would do is they would learn to fly and then they would ferry us in to the nearest town and we would be, we would sort of attend early preschool or whatever it's called, like Monday through Wednesday. And then Wednesday we would fly back to the reserve and we would be here through the weekend. And we were basically getting three days of schooling. That seemed like enough to them at the time. So they took up <laughs> flying. And my memories of it are that when, we, when they would pick us up on a Wednesday afternoon, to be honest, they weren't great pilots. So they were, they were in a bit of a state. You know, the, the first 50 hours of being a pilot, there's a lot of stress about getting it in the air and then safely getting it back on the ground. So they would, we would arrive and they would say to us, we're in flying mode right now. And flying mode meant we could not ask any questions. We had to shut up. Kids, you kids, shut up. We're in flying, flying mode. And then they had this other sort of drill that they worked out with each other, which was called pilot in command. And, you know, when they were up front there in the cockpit, the one would say, I am now pilot in command. And if you handed over control, you would say, handing over control. And the other would say, I am now pilot in command. Pilot in command, handing over to pilot in command. I am now pilot in command. And they had this whole drill, right? The first <laughs> crash that we were involved in, <laughs> we came into land and we had a plane. It was a little Cessna that had a quirk. And let me tell you, when it comes to aviation, you don't want planes with quirks. You can have a quirky like pickup truck, but you cannot have a quirky aircraft. The quirk was that when you pulled the power, not all power cut off. It kept a little bleed of power on. So my mother was flying the plane. She came into land on the little 800 meter, you know, dirt strip. She cut the power. The plane sort of landed, but it just kept on a little too much power and we kept going. And she started to say to my father and my sister and I are watching from the back in flying mode. Uh, I can't get the power off. I can't get the power off. I can't get the speed off. And he says, he's saying to her, you are pilot in command. You are pilot in command. And she's going, I know, but I can't get the speed off. And eventually she kicks the rudder and the plane veers off the runway and we hit a marula tree and we stop. <laughs> that was our, that's our first crash. And it's one, of those, it's one of those ones, Tim, that if you bring it up today, like at dinner, he will say, will say, well, you know, I couldn't get the speed off. And he'll say, my father will say, well, you were pilot in command. And immediately a fight will develop at dinner. I know I was pilot in command, but before we hit the tree, do you think you could have pulled the power? You could have, so like, it's, there's a little tension around it. Anyway, <laughs> the worst one was we were flying a short hop. And by this stage, my parents had launched, you know, a bigger safari company. And they had decided that when they flew, they should actually have a commercial pilot with them. And so the setup was, it's a commercial pilot in the left-hand seat. It's my father in the right-hand seat. And then there's club seating, four seats in the back. So, the, But you sit facing each other like you would on a train, you know, like looking at each other. So we're flying along and I see my mother and her friend are sitting opposite me. And they're looking towards the cockpit. I'm looking back at them. And suddenly we just hear this outrageous like sound. Bah! And wind fills the cockpit and it's just this incredible rushing sound, amazing sound. Looking at my mother and her friend next to her, it looks like Pulp Fiction. There is just blood and guts all over them. It looks like someone took a bird, put it in a blender and made like a bird smoothie and then threw it over them. They've got wing on their head. They've got a foot on their shoulder. They are covered in blood and guts. And so I turn and I look back at the cockpit the front window of the plane is gone. The pilot is conked out. He's passed out in his seat. And my father is like orientating himself in the madness. And right <laughs> at that moment, as he sort of, as my father got his bearings, I saw him grab the controls. And then he looked back at me and said, I am pilot in command. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so now, uh, now we, we've, we realize we've got a situation. What had happened is we had hit a stalk, direct bird strike. And the bird had come in the window. And in fact, the beak of the bird had gone into, had hit the pilot, the, the bird had hit the pilot. The beak had gone into the skin 
um, between the pilot's skull and the skin. So he had a beak sticking out of his face and a bit of stork neck <laughs> sticking out of his face. And he's totally passed out. Meantime, my father has taken control of the plane. The woman on the back seat screaming next to my mom is going, we're all going to die, we're all going to die. And that's when my mother gave her the patented mother slap, slapped her twice and said, we are not going to die. And then out of nowhere, my mother reaches into her sort of handbag and pulls out a flight call sheet. And she starts screaming standard emergency practices to my father. Call SOS base, request emergency landing. And he's ticking off things. Now, at this point, the pilot starts to wake up and he wakes up and he's slowly gaining his bearings. And as he looks around, he has this strange kind of dot in his vision. And as he's looking around, the dot follows him and he eventually puts his hand up. And what it is, it's the stork's neck sticking out of his face that everywhere he looks, (laughs) it's in his line of sight because it's connected to his face. And it was at that moment that he grabbed the neck and the beak of the stork and he pulled it out of his face and looked at it and then passed out again. (coughs) And I don't know if you've ever seen a head wound, but head wounds bleed nicely. And so he's bleeding quite intensely. It's pandemonium back there, but my folks have got the controls. They call the airport. My father starts the descent and eventually the pilot wakes up and he comes to and he's actually, he's all right. And he takes over control of the plane again and we do an emergency landing. And the funny thing about it was we were flying from the reserve to go and catch a commercial flight. So we landed at a commercial airport and we got out covered in stork, stork wing and stork foot and stork guts. And we walked into the terminal building and I said to my mother, well, what do we do now? She said, just board the flight and look forward. So we got onto the plane looking like we had been in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and just sat down next to regular folks traveling covered in guts and blood and just sat there and looked forward and and, and flew to our next destination like nothing had happened. (laughs) But it was a, you know, we grew up in a real wild way. We grew up in a pioneering way. And my parents were were irrepressible, I think is the word, which you kind of have to be to run a safari business where things, you know, running a safari business, you're out in nature and things are happening and, and unexpected things are happening almost continuously. So that was kind of a my wild youth in some ways, you know, was very, very orientated towards that kind of South African wildness. And, and also I think that we were, we've changed a lot over the years, but, and we've been in our own healing journeys and our own healing Mm. journeys have changed us as a family for sure. But for many years there, we were just kind of packing on, uh, you know, I guess we were frozen by some trauma ourselves and we were just living as wildly through it as we could.